Hey guys, this is Kim Rin with the Money Freedom Movement podcast, where my mission is to help you to optimize your money so that you can live financially free. And you know, there are a ton of investment products out there. You could put your money in stocks, in bonds, in mutual funds, in ETFs, hoping to get a return on your investment. Well, one of the best places uh, you can put your money is into your your health, your physical health. And today, my special guest, Kenny Simmons of Stronger Fit, is going to talk about that very thing. Kenny is a personal trainer here in the Atlanta area. She is my personal trainer out at Effect Fitness. And this was honestly one of the hardest shows to come up with a title for because we talked about so many different things. We talked about various facets of physical health um, or of health in general. So we talked about physical fitness, emotional health, mental health, spiritual health, boundaries, relationships. We explored a ton of different things, but all of these different facets play into our health. And so I really appreciate the insight Kitty had to offer and her journey that she shared. So please enjoy our, my conversation with Kenya Simmons of Strong Her Fit. But first, let's warm up to some intro music. I should also mention before we get into it uh, that we were in an open restaurant area where we recorded this time around. So you'll hear some distinct restaurant sounds in the background. There's a couple of um, very clear fork drops or chairs being moved. So that's just a heads up on that. But anyways, great conversation. Let's try again. Welcome to the Money Freedom Movement Podcast. My name is Kim Wren. I'm your host, and I am so excited to be here with a special guest. We're in, uh, we're at the Gathering Spot here in yes. Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm here with, well, she goes by many names. <laughs> Sometimes she's the general. Sometimes she's Le Durag. Oh my God, <laughs> so bad, <laughs> so bad. We know when that Durag shows up in the gym. I know. It's, it's- gonna be one of those days yes, yes. but today we'll call her kenya simmons yes. of strong her fit that is me that's you that me. thanks for being here today of course it's my pleasure how you doing i'm doing really good good this is my my off day tuesdays are my off days so. tuesdays are off days yeah, i like good. this i love that yeah. well thanks for being on the show today um so why don't you tell the people who you are what you do yeah let's let's start with that Okay, well, I am Kenya Simmons. I am from Athens, Georgia. I'm a personal trainer. Um, I've been doing it full time for about almost two years. Okay. I think two years will in April. Nice. Will be I've been doing it full time. So yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell us about so personal trainer. Mm-hmm. What's been what's what was your fitness journey like? Mm. I played you, sports. Okay, were I you played sports like in high school. In high school? I, I was athletic. Cool. Um, went to college. Didn't really, didn't work out or play sports in college like the first two years. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you look in the mirror and you're like, wow, okay, things look a little different. <laughs> oh, okay. right, right, right. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> I kind of got back into working out. Um, I've always been a relatively healthy person. Okay. I didn't really have many challenges there, but not physical challenges sure so when i was older getting back into the swing of working out Mm -hmm. stemmed from being in tough places emotionally Mm. and not really understanding having felt like i wasn't emotional and really coming to the understanding that i am and i'm very sensitive so i jumped into fitness to combat emotional things that's interesting Try, really being being avoided. That's really what it was for me. Okay. So. So not necessarily good that you were avoidant. Yeah. But the but just thinking about like when we're going through emotional stuff, there's yeah. so many different ways that you could have yes like expressed that that, that were not good. Yes, that I there were several ways. I mean, that a lot of humans cope with stress, be it drugs, be it alcohol, yeah. be it whatever. I felt like I chose a really good way yeah. to cope with it. Yes. It's, you know, I lost the weight. I looked great. Mm-hmm. I was really focused on what I ate. 
and things of that nature. But those things, I still was not tending to the things that were urgent. Right. Because my physical fitness is important, but my emotional health was urgent. Yeah. And I wasn't dealing with it in the ways that I should have. For sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Mm -hmm. So when you got there, like, what did that look like? Was that just an internal journey for you? Did you seek counseling? Like, what did that look like? It's it's super internal for me. Okay. Um, I I have journaled since I was in the fifth grade. I still have those journals. Do you ever go back and read them? I do. That's awesome. I, it's like 2002, 2003, like, oh, my, oh my God. Right. Like, what are you talking about? I, <laughs> so I love I, going back and reading old yeah, journals. But just yeah. like seeing what you were struggling with it, back then, how you thought back then. Like, it's so interesting. Yes. Like, literally, I am very much a hermit crab, like, introvert. So mm. I'm always, I'm very focus in terms of my internal world and I've yeah. always been that way yeah so when I came to that conclusion I was like you cannot function at your best and not address mm. how you feel right I mean a lot of my life you know I was told certain things about myself and I accepted it. it's like you know you're not emotional you don't care you know you're a robot you're this and I'm like you know what maybe you're right So I really had to put forth the time to, like, undo that. Sure. So I literally stepped back from everything, everybody. I went to work, and Mm -hmm. I went home. Gotcha. And I journaled every day. Wow. I wrote every day. Wow. Because a lot of how I felt I was scared to acknowledge. Yeah. Like, you don't necessarily have to be speaking to anyone. Like, writing something down is very real. Mm. And I... As much as I journal, I didn't in that phase. I'm like, I don't want to write about that. It's going to make it very real. So yes. I avoided that too. Wow. And I just had to face that and really face myself in that season. Yeah. So I'm curious because, mm-hmm. as you know from mm-hmm. our sessions, uh, that's something I'm working through personally. Yes. Something I find so difficult mm-hmm. is putting a label, like a word to what I'm feeling. Yes. Do you have a process of it? Like, okay, so when I was in elementary school. Yes. <laughs> my mother legitimately at one point banned me from being able from using the word fine or good yes. when she asked me how my day was yes. I just didn't have any other words like right. you know she asked, how was your day today good right how, how's your day fine right like for years it went on like that mm-hmm. and then she was eventually like you have to find other words yes you can't use those words anymore right. And they worked for a little bit, mm-hmm. but I eventually like fell back into old habits. So, yes. and that has carried through into my adult life. Like I just have a hard time connecting yes. the internal to a, a word, verbalizing yes. it. Do you mm-hmm. have a process for that? Was that just like practice? It came through, or like, has it, have you always found the vocabulary part of it easy? Or I I think that that's a really good question. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that it's very very limiting Mm -hmm. to minimize how you feel to just one word so and we do that as a defense mechanism because typically we do that when it's something that we don't really want to talk about so when you write about it I literally like my process when I'm not entirely I can't give it an adjective yeah I think that's a I don't think that you should I think I really will just get a pen Mm -hmm. and write whatever it is gotcha and there are days where it's it's jumbled it doesn't Mm -hmm. make a lot of sense you're just like what was going on that day and then you know you may have the experience the next week where you're writing about and you're like that day makes so much sense to me now seven days later writing about it seven days ago makes sense today Mm -hmm. so don't limit it to just one word like literally just write whatever is on you whatever you're feeling just write it that's good yeah that's good i think a lot of the uh, resistant which we are way off course from the questions i sent you (laughs) but this is good (laughs) that's all right hey it's my show i talk about what i want Um, right uh so um i think like that's good a lot of the resistance for me Mm -hmm. in that is like i'm just such a perfectionist yes like i don't like putting out anything that's not like well put together yes. wrapped with a bow around yes. it and, yes. stand, and like so when I'm just brain like when uh in school when the teacher would just say brainstorm yes I'd be like 
but it has to be a good brainstorm. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Uh, so a lot of that process that you're talking about sounds like just like just vomiting, just you brain, have to. just just you do. Yeah, letting it come out. And yeah. I have a hard time just letting like the raw data yes. come out. Yes. Um, so yeah, that's good. I want to try that. I mean, I just because I share that same sentiment mm-hmm. when it comes to as impulsive as I am because I'm an Aries. I'm very impulsive. <laughs> I'll, I fly by the seat of my pants when it comes to writing or speaking. Mm-hmm. I tend to marinate a lot when it comes to that. I am a perfectionist in terms of words. Right. So it really having to just get it out like what what do you think i literally would wire my brain to and you have to find a balance balance in all things of okay course. you can't just say everything off the top of your head but that's a fact i had to discern in those moments where i just needed to let it flow right i just let it flow okay mm-hmm. that's good that's real good okay <laughs> so um so so you you're a trainer right mm-hmm. i work as i don't think i i took the moment to mention that <laughs> Kenny is my trainer yes <laughs> and uh, I am her I, yes exactly <laughs> and uh, so you you have uh, your clientele is yes. called the K team yes shout out to K team yes K team is awesome I ah, love them I love them too yes. I love us mm-hmm. um, but so physical fitness isn't the only thing you work with us on correct um, what else is important to a healthy lifestyle besides fitness and uh, let's just start there. What else is important to our life? The mm-hmm. health, healthy lifestyle mm-hmm. uh, beyond physical fitness. Okay. So I was literally just having this conversation yesterday. Mm. I know, well, the listeners don't know. I, I created the worksheet for you guys. And yeah. I'm like, tell me about your mental health goals, your emotional health goals, your spiritual health goals. Right. And I had a little bit of anxiety mm. about creating that for you guys I knew that it was something that would be really good but in my mind I'm like they employ me to be their trainer how are they going to receive this because I'm sure into what some of you guys told me this is beyond your scope Kenya oh I don't understand why you're concerned about why you need to know about my spiritual life why are you in my business right I don't understand like you're my physical trainer I'm like you're right but one, even from my own experience, and you guys talk to me far beyond mm. the physical fitness. Mm-hmm. So I'm listening to That's everything so that you guys are saying, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, for us to really combat this issue, this goes far beyond the gym. Right, right. I have to ask to really understand right. the whole picture. For sure. In order for me to not just be a personal trainer, but be a coach, mm-hmm. I know, I know for a fact. I am called to do more than just be a physical trainer. So I had a little anxiety. Yeah. Like, Ooh, and you guys are not shy. Okay. Listen. They were just like, what do you mean? Right. You can get out of my business. <laughs> right. So, um, and like you were, yeah. you were serious about that. Yes. We had a deadline. Yes. Listen, she said, if you don't have your homework done, you cannot train. Right. We were like, uh, I'm going to leave you in 2019. We were like, excuse me? Get it together. What? <laughs> the, the group chat blew up. <laughs> Listen, the, <laughs> the group chat was done. Okay. It, was, it exploded. Right. But, um, it, it was it, it was an interesting experience, but yeah. you're, let's just take eating, for example, sure. nutrition, which is 90% of people's issue when it comes to looking how they want to look. Yeah. I can't give you a meal guide for you to follow, but you don't have a healthy relationship with food. Right. That's not going to make a lot of sense Mm. to someone who doesn't have control when it comes to making food choices. Right. So I wanted to pry a little bit. I have to understand what's going on with you emotionally. Yeah. To know, okay, I can't set this up with you and say, hey, follow this guy. I have to set this up to where we set up promises that you keep to yourself Mm. in regards to what you feel like you need and what you want in your life so that at the end of the day we can get you to where you're trying to go because that's that's the whole point right like if you just want to work out fine i I think that's great but most people need assistance beyond that so yeah and where you are mentally 
terms of stress and sleep and things of that nature that that affects your goals too yes. like sleep is important for weight loss mm -hmm. for your hormone balance for regulation if you are stressed from work or stressed from your relationship or your children or whatever it is, that's going to affect your process. Right. The model that I use, which was the example for what I have for you guys, is what I do for myself. I am mental, emotional, spiritual, physical health. Like, I look at everything. So I just kind of use myself as an example. And I'm like, how can I define this, make it broad enough to where everyone can relate to it and it can fit everybody, but address everything right not just physical that's cool you know like a lot of what you're you're saying is the reason i stepped back from um my corporate position in yes. in finance world so i yes. i uh, used to be a kind of a formal financial advisor managing portfolios competing for assets that kind of thing um and i found in my appointments that i was far more interested to to like work with people like on on issues such as how's your how's your marriage going do yes. you and your spouse talk about yes your, do you have a goal together yes uh so what's your what's your relationship to money right what's your money story did you mm -hmm. grow up without did mm -hmm. you grow up with mm -hmm. did you never want for anything right um those are the kind of questions i was asking yes um but those were the the um, compensation model yeah. did not allow for me to yes. really dig into that yes. in an, a, an effective manner. Um, so, because like we're we're not just the dollar signs in our bank account, we're not just the number on our scales. We're not. We're, so many more things yes. integrate into that. So mm -hmm. that's cool. That's cool. So I also call myself a coach now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, from a different angle, but yep. it, that that holistic view of the mm -hmm. client is so so important. important it's so important because what do you do you can't just like cut people off at the head no. and forget the rest of their life not at all and when you want to do meaningful work you understand that knowing that type of stuff yeah. i have to know that yes like i'm not trying to tell you what to do how to live your life how to make your decisions but mm -hmm. i'm going to look at it give you an objective opinion from what you're telling me and try to guide you in a direction that I feel like yeah. it's going to honor you as a person. Yeah, so. yeah, that's good. So what kind of, in, just in your life, what kind of like routines and structures and habits do you have set around around your world for your, um, of course, physical health, uh -huh. but mental health, emotional oh, health? Oh, wow. I, yeah, I, I can give just you Just rattle a off some things. <laughs> drop, drop a couple gems for the people. Um, you know, like I said before, I am an introvert, so... I'm in the people business, so um, Heard I often say that when I am around people, it's like draining the battery on your phone. Mm. So I have, I have to have things in place yeah. that allow for me to recharge. Like my phone is set 8 p.m. to 10 a.m. is in Do Not Disturb. Mm. I said that because I would literally where there are days I would just leave my phone and do not disturb the entire day. Right. Because I just was like, this is great. Sure. So I'm like, no, you can't go in there all day. Not all day. And if I'm not mindful about it, I, my phone would always be in do not disturb. So I said it. After 8 p.m., don't call me, do not text me unless it's like, I really need to talk to you. Right. Of course, I'm going to be available, but that's the time daily that I take to myself um, there are certain you know I love everybody everybody deserves love of course um, but there are certain people that I'm not gonna talk to mm. at the beginning of my day mm. that's important like I talk to the first person that I talk to every day is like you you need to give me something right or I just won't answer or I'll talk to them later right um Good. I'm, you know, I can be a bit militant when it comes to things. So, you, I, <laughs> I the mean, general, yeah, you, okay, okay, <laughs> that's obvious. But I mean, I'm asleep in most nights by eight thirty. Hey, man, nine o'clock. Like I really value my sleep. My friends know if they try to call me after about nine o'clock. Yeah, I'm, it's I'm, going to voicemail. You know, it's, it's just, just going to voicemail. I catch you at I'm four o'clock when tomorrow. I wake up. <laughs> I'll talk to you tomorrow. Right, right, and. And that's okay. And, and you have to make those decisions regardless of how some people feel. Because yes. you won't always get, you know, warm responses from these decisions that you make. So you have to know, I get it. Mm -hmm. I understand how you feel. But I'm still going to 
do what I do because yeah. I need this for me. Amen. So and and I went through, you know, a season where it was just like I learned a lot about myself last year. Okay. And I learned a lot about what I need mm-hmm. in terms of just me. Yeah. And I went through a, a long period of time where what I needed was being used against me because mm. I didn't know that I needed it. Okay. So it's like, you want to be by yourself? What do you mean? It's just like, okay, well, maybe they're right. Maybe you don't care. Maybe you're this and you're that, and you think that you have to go back to the drawing board and fix all these things. And it's like, no, you just need solitude. Yes. You need that time, that thing, that space that is yours. Yeah. So now that I know that, I'm able to ask for that yes. and put the verbiage behind it up front. Right. And set that boundary like, hey, yeah. this is what it is. Hey. <laughs> and either you're going to get with it or you're not. And right. That's literally how I feel about it. But Do you um, find that the people who like really care about you get that? Yeah. And, yeah. and respect that boundary? Absolutely. Good. Absolutely. Um... I mean, as far as nutrition, let me tell you how I look at food. Okay, tell us. I look at food like if you were to put gas in your car. Okay. You know, you have three options where it's, what is it, 87? Sure. I don't know, 87, 93, 97. Like, that's literally how I look at it. Yeah. And I'm going for 97, 90% of the time. Like, I can't let everything that I put in my mouth be satisfying my taste buds. Mm. That's just not how food is designed. Sure. So, I'm like, okay, what's the best option? Not the better option. Because mm. better, we're just comparing it to, like, terrible. Right. Before it was terrible. So, <laughs> right. better is not good. good. Better is just better than what you were doing before. Okay. So, I go for best. Mm. Like, what's the best thing that I can eat? Like I'm, I'm going to go for that. Right. So, I mean, man, I could, I could really keep going. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. oh, the biggest one, and I'll draw, stop here. Boundaries. Yeah. All caps, the biggest font, exclamation, italicized, mark, 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 mark. Yeah. Underline, no italics. This is real bold. Oh, bold. Underline. Okay. Give you a little Microsoft Word, but. Okay. Um. I can't speak enough about drawing lines that you don't allow people, anything, your job, boyfriend, girlfriend, kids, mom, Mm. siblings, to cross. Yeah. You cannot, you can't let your life be a free for all. Like that's, that's the only sense of control that you have and the only control that you need. Right. Which protects like your internal world which is your mental emotional spiritual health so boundaries boundaries yeah man very important yes and communicated because a lot of people Mm. have boundaries on the inside that they don't necessarily communicate on the outside absolutely Um, and not that you have to list rattle off to everything right every everybody every Mm. all of your boundaries of course like appropriately but knowing how to communicate those yes to people for sure and ask for that respect yes and respecting other people's boundaries, yes. like returning the, returning the respect you as well. You just made a really good point. Because we're typically, from my own experience, I won't speak for we in humanity, I speak for myself. Yeah. Sometimes, because a lot of the times we have boundaries from that originate from being hurt mm. and from trauma and things of that nature, it makes us defensive where the boundary is like a 100-foot wall with barbed wire and pit bulls and it puts us in a place where we are really it's difficult for us to respect the boundaries of others because we're so concerned about defending our own right so that's a really good point because i had to learn that where okay. it's just like this is my boundary oh well this is mine i get it and i hear what you're saying but this is my boundary it makes you very defensive so that's a really good point mm-hmm. i'm glad that you said that good good so when you wrote me back after mm-hmm. we scheduled our, our recording session today, mm-hmm. I noticed that you said that in your, your title that you're a life coach. Yeah. Have you always considered yourself a life coach or is that a, a de- recent development? So this goes back to, it's more so recent. Okay. And it stems from 
how I sat down with you guys and had the meetings. The 2020. Yeah, absolutely. Game plan, vision. Come on, got come, to. Yeah. Got to we have all clarity this year. Yeah. But life coach is just a word that I used to give the concept. Gotcha. I don't consider myself a life coach. Okay, okay. Um, I consider myself someone who can coach you in more than just physical fitness. So sure. I just put life in front of it. Cool. Um, I like it. Yeah. Have you ever considered like expanding on that, like mm. officially getting some letters after your name? You so know. Tell us, tell me yeah, about that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one, one thing that I have considered over the last few years is therapy. Okay. I think I would be really really good at that sure i've considered it yeah. you know me in school <laughs> <laughs> i have a i have a completely different question now that you said yes what what was your high school friend group were you with the the girl jocks were you with the nerds oh, who were your good question who are your people you know i felt very misplaced mm. i was overall yeah i hung around i i guess you could say the cool kids okay I was kind of popular by default. I hung around them because we lived in the same neighborhood. Okay. But I always felt like, you're nothing like these people. I always right. felt that way. That's nothing so like interesting. them. So I, it was very much like a out-of-body experience being in high school. It's mm-hmm. like I'm, I'm sitting back and I'm watching them do and say things. I'm just like, who are these people? Like, yeah. I just, I was different. Right. But... Huh. On the exterior, That's I fit right in. Right. Fit That's right. I mean, I had older brothers. Everyone knew my brother, so everyone knew me. So I just fit in. But I was just like, you guys are weirdos. Or maybe I'm the weirdo. You know, so I don't know. <laughs> I always like being rolling with the weirdos. The weirdos was a, they were, come on. Man, the, the nerd crew, those like, are my on. people. Yeah. Those are my people. Yes. The orchestra dorks. Those are the my The band people. nerds. It's like, man, the, you really know how to play this cello. Bruh, you the, are dope. Like, the people, what? listen, the real friends in high school yes. were the homies behind the the uh, the mixer in the back of the theater, yes. not the kids on stage. Yes. Although I had acting friends too, but like the tech theater folks. They could work chainsaws and yes. all that. Yes. Yes. That I was. Spent, those are my people. Friend wise, I spent a lot of my life. I would say probably I'm 30, probably until about 25. Mm. Just being very misplaced yeah. in terms of friends. Okay. Yeah. That's so interesting. Mm-hmm. That's so so interesting. Um, something I have sort of shared. Yeah, I don't know how much I've expanded on this with you, but mm-hmm. um, something I've I've shared uh, before uh, in different contexts where like my struggles growing up always, not always, but um, frequently feeling misplaced yes. as well from the perspective of so I was a you know young black girl, yes, um, classically trained in music world, mm-hmm. which is very much a, a white space it is still is today yes um it's getting a lot better but uh still you know for sure was back then growing up um so i was always in this this space that i just kind of recently have been working through where i've always felt too black to be accepted in white spaces yes but even more hurtfully on the reverse side of that yes too white to fit in in black spaces yes uh, like, for example, my, my mom's family, my mom's from Charleston, South Carolina, and folks down in Charleston have a very specific Absolutely. dialect. I can only Gullah, imagine. The yeah. Gullah dialect Geechee. is... Geechee. Yes. Yes. Hey, <laughs> you could tell a Charleston... Come on. What? From a mile away. Yes. Okay, so like going back home for family reunions mm-hmm. or even like just being around my cousins today, and we have like such good relationships but I'm always like hyper aware that I talk differently than them. Yes. You know, like that kind of stuff. Yes. Those kind of identity things mm-hmm. uh, have been things that I've been been working through. Mm-hmm. Um, so like the that that sentiment of just like not quite uh, yes. feeling yes. like you're the piece in the jigsaw puzzle that Absolutely. just you got to the end of the puzzle and you're that piece that just didn't quite work. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, but so what what was it like? busting out of that like was that was that a hard process did you like was that a freeing process it's a really good question and it it literally it can find a space in so many different aspects of my life but I really had to shift my mind Mm -hmm. in terms of not really focusing on where I don't fit because I had spent so much time there and putting the focus on where I do and not focusing on 
who I'm not, but actually who I am as a person. And I, when I make the shift of really like owning who I am, everything else aligned. Mm. Like everything else started to make sense. Got you. Like I attracted the friends that yeah. make sense to me. Yeah. Because I'm not that friend that's going to be super present. You're going to talk to me every day. Right. I'm not that friend. Right. And I had friends that wanted that from me. Mm. And when you're in those conflicting type of relationships, relationships that conflict with who you are as a person, it makes you question who you are. You're right. like, something's wrong. I need to go fix this. And it's like, no, there isn't something wrong with me. This just does not fit. And it's okay. Right. Like, it's okay. Yeah. I want you to go find the friend who's going to be present every day. I think that's great. That's just not me. And I literally had to stop myself from fighting to fit yeah. or to prove that mm-hmm. I was this when I know that I'm, I'm this person over here. So it was so freeing. I remember having a friendship. If I think about relationships, <laughs> the most difficult relationship I've been in was a friendship. It was not a romantic one. Sure. And I remember I that friendship ended when I was 25. We were friends since I was like 12. Wow. So very long friendship. Of course. And I remember the day that I ended the friendship finally. Because there were times, it, that wasn't the first time we, I ended the friendship. There were several okay. moments in, in all of that time. But I remember the peace that was over me when I said, you know what? I am not, I am a square person. Your friend peg is a circle. Right. I don't fit. Yes. And I want you to go find the person that you need that's going to fit that. I want you to have that. It was so much peace when I ended that. Yeah. That's so, so good. That's so good. Just it, like allowing yourself to yes, say. Yes. It's a, that's okay. It's okay. That's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Yes. But that's I had so to good. overcome like the shame and guilt that came with mm. feeling like I just didn't measure up. Yes. I'm just not this person that you need. That's guilt. Right. When you're in that predicament, like you're my friend, you're not the friend that I need. I'm hurt. I'm this and I'm that. And you're like, wow, like I might suck just a little bit, maybe just a tad bit <laughs> right. because like I'm just not giving you what you need. Right. And it's like, no, nah, and I'm not giving you what you need because that's not me. Right. And it's all good. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's, that's so good. Um, so what was it like for you when you became a, a business owner, an entrepreneur, a brand owner? You have wow. Stronger Fit. Wow. You've got your training. Wow. I mean, what what was that process like? Leaving the security of a of a paycheck? Ooh. Wow. Um, I'm still in that process. Yeah. It's not it hey. has not come to an end. Gotcha. So, um hmm. <laughs> Did let you, me uh <laughs> let me gather your thoughts on that. Let me gather <laughs> so many layers to it. There's yeah. so many layers to it. Um it's terrifying. It's terrifying. And if I can be perfectly honest, you can. um Work ethic, work ethic was not my strong suit. Okay. Um, things have come relatively easy to me in terms of just talent or being able to do something. They've come relatively easy to me, which put me in a mindset of if it doesn't come easy to me, I don't want to do it. Like I will, if I don't get it in, within the first three seconds, I'm going to put it down. Got gotcha. you. And I literally had to sit myself down and say look listen now you do not have a choice you have to be a doer and that's probably been my greatest challenge when it comes to being an entrepreneur is having a work ethic and understanding Mm. just how much it takes right like you trade in 40 hours a week and you are investing double yes yes double that Yes. And what you want to do, like there never really is, like a time that you clock out. Yeah, you, you can't say Friday night I'm out come done. On, like, come right, on. like come you on. could. There's always something you could be doing. Always, and, and that, knowing that if you don't do it, I mean, if there <laughs> is some failure ahead, yes, failing because when you don't have a job and you're an entrepreneur, everything is on you. Hundred percent. So when failure occurs 
that 100% falls on you. It's right. not the same as like when I was at work and I turned this assignment late and my, the meeting went bad. Like right. all of that's not on you. Right. It's just those 30 minutes that you didn't do well. Of course. Entrepreneurship, when it crumbles or something goes bad, it's like the world mm -hmm. has toppled mm -hmm. on top of you. Mm -hmm. So you put this immense amount of pressure. Mm -hmm. And that was my first year yeah. of entrepreneurship. Gotcha. I'm trying to divide my focus on 10 different things. Yes. Which put me in a space of being able to complete nothing. Yeah. Gotcha. And I had to scale back and not think that looking at other people and what they're doing, you're so far behind, you need to close the gap. Hello. Not understanding that you are a beginner and you will not be a master if you don't master this. Right. So I had to really just step back and be a good student. Yeah. My student hat, I will never take my student hat off, hat off again. Never. Gotcha. That's it, good. It will always be a hat that I wear interchangeably with other ones. Gotcha. So that's, I had to sit back and watch. Yeah, that's so important. People be who are doing what I want to do mm. and see what character traits. I know I talked about this in a video I posted not too long ago. What type of character traits do these people have? Mm -hmm. You need to embody those same things. Mm -hmm. So I, I had to watch and I had to have some humility. And that was not easy right. because I've been the best and good at so many things. And I was not at this. Yeah. So I had to be humble yeah. and like really sit my ego in the back seat mm. and say, it's time for you to learn. That's important. You are not the best at this anymore. That's so good. That's so good. Like just jumping into a new business, like yes. there's there's so much to get done and there's so many things that you could be doing. Yes. So you're looking at people who are 10, 12, 20 years in the training business. Why do you think like, you don't even deserve to be there with them? You right. have not put in the work. So not you need to get over yourself right. and this entitlement that you have to what they have. <laughs> you haven't put in the work. Not Sit yet. down. Hey. Yes. It is yes. brick yes. by brick. Yes. Client by client. Yes. Failure by failure. Come on. Oh my gosh. Come just... on. Failure. You learn in the business world by making a whole lot of mistakes. That's right. And they have not stopped. <laughs> you learn by wasting a whole lot of money. Yes. And time. And and come oof. on. Oof. Come on. It's, yeah. Yeah. So. It, it's not for the faint of heart. I'll oh, tell you that. Right? It, it's just not. That's that's real. That's mm -hmm. the word right there. Mm -hmm. Like this stacking that those experiences yeah, month by month, day by day, client by client, brick yes. by brick. And because and, it, it could be so easy to just like become a squirrel like, oh, they have a YouTube channel. I need a YouTube channel. Yes. Oh, they have, you know, they're doing this conference. I need to do a conference. Oh, yes. they're doing this event. I need to do an event. Yes. It's like, hold on. Yes. I need to learn how to like get a client. Yes. Do the right thing by right. them and like do that first yes just like master that and then step two you know like right start writing or start you know build right. my website or build my whatever the, the next thing is right but just like seeing somebody who has this big beautiful yes thing yes. thing that they built yes i mean they started on that decades ago yes and to draw a distinction to your point because i literally was thinking about this the other day mm -hmm. like i said i had to sit back and watch yeah um people and I, I view them as examples of you know what they're doing you follow good examples but you have to understand the way in which you are called to also be an example you don't just follow the example trying to mirror what they're doing that may not be your ministry Amen to that. so you have to have a really good sense of yourself yeah and have a really good connection with your creator because that's where your purpose derives from let's just be real about it right to understand they're doing a great job of what they're doing. They've built something amazing. But that's not quite what I feel is for me. Yes. So I'm going to watch. I need the same work ethic so that I can put it into what is mine. Right. And not take that same work ethic and put it into what they're doing. Right. Because yeah. that's that might be a circle peg and I'm a square. Yeah. So I have to understand that. So that's really where I am now where it's like I've watched good examples and I've put those same qualities of consistency and just being present mm -hmm. meaning showing up because every day it's not easy to show up when things are not going the way that you want them to go mm -hmm. you don't have the audience you don't have the following that you want it's, it's difficult to show up on those days and now I'm in a space where it's like okay so how are you going to be an example 
because you have your own light. Mm -hmm. And you're not trying to shine brighter than anybody else, but you know that you need to shine like this. Right. So how do you how do you do that now? That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Curious, what was your connection to Effect Fitness where you where you trained? Oh, I've been going to Effect since it was in his garage. Since the garage? Yes. Day? A friend of mine took me and I was like, man, I work out all the time. Okay, I can do this. Right, right, right. Three pound weights. So I'm like five minutes in like, so we're not going to take a break. So we're not going to break. <laughs> so y'all don't take breaks. So we're going to go for the whole song. We're not going to get a water break. I'm like, this is crazy. But he it was duly be calling people names he's out. He's insane. He's, he's insane. Absolutely insane. He is off his rocker but he has <laughs> he has built he he is a shining mm -hmm. example of an example that you would watch yes and and follow just to see right he's done something amazing he's done something that no other gym has done probably in the world literally none as far as physical presence yes not the people you're touching online throughout the world these people sure. actually come yes. and are in his presence every day Bruh, so look, it's crazy it's crazy it's crazy it's so great listen 5 30 a.m 6 30 a.m listen 12 o'clock noon listen 4 30 p.m listen 5 30 p.m listen 6 30 p.m pat talking about work ethic saturday 8 a.m Saturday, 10 a.m. You got to get there at like 7.15 on a if Saturday now. Ethic, if work ethic had a picture for it the would, definition, it would be Keandre. Yes. It would be him, hands down. Yeah. It It's nearly impossible to be in the same space as this man and not feel like, all right, you got to stop bullshitting. Like, <laughs> you, you got to do something. Right. Because this man puts in, has the same amount of time that you do every day mm -hmm. how are you investing it yeah so yeah it's it's been an amazing an amazing cool. thing to watch that's yeah. cool what do you um as a trainer and as my trainer mm -hmm. and as our trainer mm -hmm. k team what um what do you want to see in 2020 from us and with us you know i have adopted <laughs> this philosophy of being very present. I only know what I want from you guys in the day that I'm in. I don't, I don't, because I don't want to have what I want from y'all this year mm -hmm. and it limit hmm. what you guys can actually do. Yeah. Um, the only expectation that I have is that you guys give me your best. That's it. And that's a reflection of what I give y'all. Mm -hmm. And it's always the absolute best that I have. So that's the only thing that I want to see. Cool. It, it, I mean, it's like 40 of you guys. There's no KT way. KT steep. Like, Man. who am I to think that I have an idea of what 40 people yeah. should, should be doing? Right. No. Yeah. Um, I just want to, in any way that I can, like, literally set you guys free of anything mm -hmm. that is keeping your higher self at bay yeah. so that you can go out and define it however you want to. And so I just want to see you guys fly. And that's very broad, and I think that it should be. Cool. So that you guys can fly in whatever direction you want to go. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. K-Team has everything. Yeah. How did that happen? Like, was on. that was that like an intentional like thing oh, on man, you? Like, God, how no. did, did, no. did K-Team come together? God, no. Like, you know. Like, like, it was never an intention of mine. It kind of morphed into it. Okay. And it's still, it is still very... The, the K team is not, I don't even feel like it's mine. Mm. I just feel like it's K team because I'm, <laughs> I started out as a personal trainer. Okay. Sure. K team like has a life of its own. It is its, it's own not organism. Mine. It's not mine. It's not. Got you. And that's a quality of a really good leader too. Listen. To where you can like step back and say, this, yes, I started it. Yeah. But it's, it's us. It's y'all. It's yes. not just my thing to control or manipulate or whatever it, yes yeah so one of my favorite quotes i'm really into eastern religion is by mm. lao Tzu. if i'm pronouncing it right probably not lao Tzu, um he's the creator of taoism and i'm probably not going to quote it right but it's it's the sense of 
be the type of leader that once whoever you're leading crosses the finish line, they feel as if they did everything on their own. Like mm-hmm. you can't really tell the leader from who they're leading. Gotcha. And that's that's my philosophy in terms of being a leader. Interesting. That's cool. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Um, what's on the horizon for your brand, Stronger Fit? Mm, you know, I honestly do not know. Okay. I honestly don't know. Um, I'm really in a space of not being driven by anything and really just trying to let my intuition lead me in whatever decision or direction that I need to go. Yeah. So, I, you know, I, I don't know. It's probably going gonna, gonna to look a lot different than what I probably thought it was going to be okay. initially. Sure. So I'm not trying to be too rigid in what I want it to look like. Gotcha. So that it can look how it's supposed to look. Gotcha. And not just what I desire it to look like. Right, right, right. It could be something... It, it is something very different than what I desire it to look like. Sure, sure. So, That's yeah. cool. That's cool. Um, well, let's start wrapping up here. Yes. So give me um, some some black-owned businesses, some, some service providers you use that you want to shout out on the show. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, first, it would be Empirical. You know Trina. Trina's, Trina. on, the, Trina's on the K team. What up, Trina? I mean, every thing be it tonic be it multivitamins be it sea moss be it face mask be it hair conditioner be it whatever it is she truly is i name her the alchemist because that's literally who she is that's what she embodies to me i use her stuff every day as far as nutrient vitamins vitamins and minerals that's who i go to she knows so much man she She is i thought i knew so much. I was like, we've talked. I was, how do you know this, man? She is like Mother Earth. What? Love her. Trina's. She's great. amazing. Yes. When it comes to juice, the right greens, Mia. I love her. Shout Everything out to Mia. is organic. Uh-huh. She juices it the same day. Uh-huh. There is no water added. There are no preservatives. No nothing. You are literally drinking of the earth. Mm. You twist the cap and it's like, who put all, all these blessings in here? Okay? <laughs> I'm trying to understand. So, love, 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 Mia. Um, Doesn't she deliver juices? Yes, to she delivers like, to that's, your home that's up to 40 so miles outside the city of Atlanta. That's such you a will open your model. door, it's on your doorstep. That's amazing. Like, good morning, here's the juice. That's awesome. Yes, and she ships as well. So, I mean, oh man, it's so many. Like, I think about these wonderful lashes that hey. I have on. Um, by Linga Looks Linga does amazing work in terms of beautifying mm. but just expounding upon how beautiful you already are she's an amazing makeup artist amazing esthetician love her um, oh it's so many yes. and I literally use these women every day you like, sure do these aren't people that I admire well I do admire them I admire right, right, them right. in my real life right because I actually interact with them and I patronize their business so yes. man it's just so out to all the Cool. Yeah, they're amazing. Cool. I love them. Cool, cool. Well, we'll just have to have you on again sometime so you can shout no. out more people. Yes, anytime. Yes. Anytime. Well, this has been fun. Tell tell people where they can uh, where they can find you online. Yes, you can find me on Instagram at Kenny Simmons. Um, and that's Kenny with an I. K E N N I. Thank you. Okay. K E N N I Simmons on Instagram. My website is KenyaSimmons.com. I have a Facebook page. <laughs> it exists. Um, if it's anything like mine, I... Li- First of all, I didn't have Facebook for 10 years. So when First I decided to all, open it back up, mm, it's a whole new world now. Oh I don't man. even know how to use it for real. Look, Facebook is trash. Can I just say that? <laughs> you know, it's, it, and it's tragic. It's, it's it's a lot going on on there. Listen, and uh, so people let's just scratch up. that. I have Facebook, but you know, guys, I'm not really on there. I do have a Twitter. Mm. I actually do tweet a lot. Do you I now? actually... Well... Listen, I hate Twitter too. I like I like Twitter. <laughs> I tweet a lot, and it's at General Kenny. I think. See, I don't, you know. <laughs> but um, Kenny with an I. Yeah, Kenny with an I. Yeah. You can find me, and you can find me at Effect. 
You sure can find her artifact. That's 1995 Metropolitan hey. Parkway Southwest. Shout Atlanta, out to Georgia with Seth. What Southwest up, Dooley? Hey. Yeah. hey, that's good. Did you know you were literally the first person I met at Effect Fitness? Really? Yes. What? Yes, I came to my first... Women of Effect... Wait, was that your first time coming? No, not at, not at well. It was on a Saturday, Saturday Bricks. Really? I don't know. For whatever reason, like, all of the all the girl, female trainers were out at a table out front, like, helping people check in or whatever. Oh, you are and right. And I, I remember. walked up, and I was yes. like, what is this? Yes. <laughs> and, yeah, I told y'all it was my first time there. Yes, and I remember. you walked me inside. Yep. You should help me find my Here's brick. Here's your brick of death. Yes. Have a great time. <laughs> Have a great time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, I remember that. So you were, you remember? Yes, oh my gosh, I and do. And then, um, also, for, so the people know, my real name at the gym is uh, Get Your Butt Down, Kim. Let and me that tell you where that from, came from. Yeah. <laughs> so me, Jamie Johnson of Beauty Two Beasts, and Andrea of Imperfect Body by Renee, we have a combined class called Women of Effect. We were in class Just one Wednesday. Death. You know. Kim here has some challenges in terms of her squat performance, <laughs> and I the one of the first things that I said in that class was get your butt down, Kim, literally because she Listen. wasn't squatting low enough. Listen, and I said that for the rest of the class. You sure and did. And the name just stuck. The name just stuck. The squats are better now, just so that you guys. Oh, know. thank you. Yeah, I'm working on They're it. They're looking you stressed oh, now. You look blessed. Thank you. Okay? <laughs> okay. They still stress me out a little bit, but not as much as back then. I'm working on it. Working mm-hmm. on it. Um, well, thanks for being on today. My pleasure. This has been a good conversation. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Very cool. So, uh, follow Kitty online. Her Instagram is hilarious. You can see all the <laughs> K Team bloopers yes. early in the morning. Yes. And she posts a great motivational, great, just inspirational stuff all throughout the day. Um, so, yeah, definitely go check her out and find her in all those other places. Yes. And, um, yeah, if you're in Atlanta, Georgia, and you are looking for a trainer, swing on by effect Come by. and find her. Kenny, thank you so much again for your time and for all the gems that you dropped in our conversation. Appreciate it a lot. And uh, for those listening, the irony of this show being published today is that I missed the entire last week at the gym. And so Kenny has been texting me, you know, that little uh, confused face emoji with the monocle on it. She's just been texting me that with no words, which is, um, you know, her way of saying, where are you? Uh, I'm coming back tomorrow, Monday morning, I'll be there. So um, but yeah, I had to had to take a kind of a a deep dive into work here for a little while. And uh, so see episode six titled I'm mad at you for a full explanation (laughs) of that situation. Um, But anyways, the website is the money freedom movement.com head on there to sign up for the email newsletter so that you can be the first to hear about webinars and classes and new resources and tools that are in development as we speak. Um, my uh, Instagram handle is at Kimren2009. Also the same handle you could find me on LinkedIn. And this has been great. Until next time, be relentless in the pursuit of your freedom. Take care, y'all.